calling you to the battlefield. He's calling you into service. God has, a plan, has called us to present our rededicated bodies. He has called us to, to present our revived emotion and for, to present our regenerated spirit. See, we do these things by kneeling, by bowing, by the clapping of our hands, by praising Him, by shouting hallelujah. Sometimes it's even done by being silent. But whatever God requires of us is how we worship Him. We need to be obedient to the way that He is calling us. And see, the more we practice these things, the more we'll be like our Savior. The more we'll be like our Lord, Jesus Christ. And that is the whole key. Ephesians 5 and 1 say, imitate Him. Imitate Him. That is our whole purpose. Jesus taught us the way to worship God. He said, not my will, but your will be done. He said, the words that you hear are not mine, but my Father. That is how we worship God. But see, not only has He called us to worship Him, but He has called us to walk with Him and to walk away from the world. Let us look at verse 2 and 3. He says, separate me. For me, bond us and soul for the work whereunto I have called us. Separate. A lot of us don't like to separate ourselves from family and friends, even though we know that we have been told to separate. I just let me just tell you a story about me. I can remember as a child playing. And I would hear my mom calling me. Now, he's either shooting marbles in the yard or playing basketball. And she would call me just when the game was getting fun. <laughs> telling me to separate myself from my friend. But you know what? The older I get, you know, I started to learn how to ignore her call. <laughs> and I know some of y'all looking at me crazy, but he is disrespect disrespectful. How in the world did God call him to be a preacher? But guess what? We do the same thing today. We ignore God's calling. God is calling some of us right now. And we have turned our heads and closed our ears. We have even closed our eyes in order not to hear Him. So why are we being disrespectful to Him? See, we have a lot of excuses of why we shouldn't do what God has called us to do. Why we shouldn't separate ourselves from the world or separate ourselves from the things or the people that he has told us to separate. Some of us even like to quote scriptures. We might say that two is better than one. The Lord said it's not good for man to be alone. And these are all true statements. You can find them in the Bible. But this is not what we're talking about today. What we're talking about today is being in obedience to God, answering the call of God to be dedicated to Him. Answering the call of God to be set aside for Him. Answering the call of God to be holy for Him. See, sometimes you have to separate yourself from family, from friends, from loved ones, from even the most precious thing you have in your possession, you have to separate yourself in order to be all that you can be for the Lord. But you know, we don't like to do that. We don't want to separate ourselves. But see, Jesus said, you're either my enemy or you're my friend. You can't be both. No, we try to straddle the fence, but we can't straddle the fence. Not, not with Jesus. You're either lukewarm you can't be lukewarm. You're either hot or you're cold. It ain't no warm in there. You're either hot or you're cold. Choose a side, pick it, stand on it, die by it. But choose a side. See, um, David states that in Psalms that we are not to walk or sit with the ungodly. And I think our problem is sometimes that we don't understand what the ungodly is. But the ungodly is that person who have not accepted Jesus Christ. The ungodly is that person who still walks after the lust of the flesh and not after the things of God. The ungodly is that person who chooses to have hate, envy, malice in their heart. 
we are not to walk, sit, or to stand with them because then they will cause us to become infected. God wants us to walk away from these people in order to worship Him. God wants us to walk away from these people in order to be and do what He has called us to do. See, to finish that story, when I ignored the call of my mom, I instantly became her enemy. I instantly became her enemy. I opened up myself to whatever punishment she deemed necessary to get me on track. Now, that was my mom. She's flesh and blood. What do you think our great God do when we disobey him? We open ourselves up for this wrath. We open up ourselves for whatever punishment he causes us to come our way. See, many of us walk around today in despair because we will not answer the call of God. Answer the call of God. Answer the call to worship Him. Answer the call to walk with Him. See, Joshua put it this way. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Now, you can't serve God and money. This is what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 24. He said, no man can serve two masters. You will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve God and the world. You cannot even serve God and your family at times. Choose who you will serve. Choose. It's all a choice. So when you choose to answer your call. See, we were talking about Paul and the other man in the book of Acts. See, they did not receive their call in Antioch. You and I are not receiving our call here today. But we receive our call even before we were in our mother's womb. God has been calling us. God has been summoning us into his presence. Will you come today? Will I come today? Will we come today? Will we answer the call? Because the call has gone out. The call has gone out to worship him. The call has gone out to walk with him and to walk away from the world. And yet there's another call that has gone out. It is the call for the Lord. It is the call to work for the Lord by witnessing the word of God at home and abroad. Witnessing, preaching, proclaiming the word of God. I know I, 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 I always hear a favorite saying anytime I, I head up on the evangelism ministry at home. And one of the favorite quotes by people who don't want to join the ministry is, God didn't call me to that. That ain't for me. I'll be the usher. Hello, ushers. I'll sing in the choir. I'll do anything but... I don't know the Bible well enough. Matter of fact, I just started coming to church. I just want to go and witness to somebody. And these are all good excuses. Because guess what? I have used them at times myself. But I like what um, Benjamin Franklin said. He said, he that is good for making excuses is seldom good for anything else. <laughs> than a bad one. So, what excuse do you have? Do you have a good one? Because in my book, there's no good excuse. See, all who choose to come to Christ are called by God to serve in His kingdom. Many of you have been called. Some of you are being called evangelists. Some of you are being called to preach. Some of you are being called to teach. Whatever God has called you to, do it with all your heart, mind, and soul. Do it as unto the Lord, not as man pleases. Some of you have been called here to serve Pastor Milton. And let me just say this. We have not spoken. Now, I love the church, but every church is the same. But because of something that he has said in the pulpit, that you don't agree with. Knowing that God sent you here to serve the man of God, 
for this hour. Just because you heard a word that you don't agree with. Even though it came from this book, the Holy Bible. But just because you don't agree with it. Just because your flesh has rised up against you. You have chose not to serve this man of God. You have chose not to help in the upbuilding of this local body called New Pleasant Grove. You have chose not to help God build up his kingdom. Will you hear the call? Not only will you hear the call, but you answer the call. See, the word of God has to go forth. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 told us to go ye therefore, teaching all nations. That's teaching your mama, your daddy, your brother, the black man, the white man, the blue man, the alien, even the person you don't like. Teach them. And then teach them not what you want, but teach them everything he commanded you. I mean, teach them everything. That you have read in here. Amen. If you only know John 3.16, well then teach them that. Amen. If you only know part of Genesis 1 and 1, God created the uh, heaven and the earth, teach them that. But teach them whatever God has commanded you. His word must go forth. Because see, when you present the truth, when you present the word of God, the Holy Ghost is in you, the Holy Ghost is with you. And it will cut whoever hears it. And so your purpose is to take the Holy Ghost to that person so that he can cut them. Because see, he's like a two-edged sword who cuts asunder. And see, this, this two-edged sword, it, it cuts both ways. It, it, it circumcises their heart so that they can become the friend, so that they can become the servant. That they can become all that God would have them to be. And then if they don't want to become, it cuts them so that it wounds them. So that they will have to fall down on bended knees and cry out to him. But we must take the word forth. Whether you want to call it witnessing, whether you want to call it proclaiming, whether you want to call it evangelism, whether you want to call it preaching. Take the word of God forth into the world. Let's 
stop making up some fancy name for these stuff and to make people feel good about what they're doing. See, Galatians 1 and 10 say, For do I now persuade man or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. This means that you, me, or anyone here at New Pleasant Grove today is not always going to be pleased with what Pastor Bolton or any preacher or any evangelist that is taking the word forward is going to say. But, but, if it is the truth, if it is the word of God, and if we are walking in the light, it ain't going to bother us. Right, right, right. That causes us to want to walk out of the church right, right, and stop talking to that person. All right, all right. But if it bothers us, it will bother us to come to a closer and a more personal relationship with our God. That's the only thing that should bother us is cause us to want to grow in Christ. Not grow away from the person right, that right. our God is using to correct us. Right. Come on, saints, it's time out for that. And to go along with the excuses, listen to the people that God used. As we stated earlier, Saul, who was later named Paul, a murderer, he labeled himself the chief of all sinners. Uh, I, 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 would like, I, I had to take that title away from him. <laughs> known as a cheater. Peter, he had a temple. David had an affair. Noah, he was a drunkard. Abraham was too old. And Lazarus was dead. Yet, they heard the call of the Lord. What is your excuse?
That is where you first have to be in order to hear God call you to His service, to call you into service. You have to come to a place where you first accept His salvation plan for you. See, God wants eternal life for you. He wants abundant life for you. Amen. Not just in the hereafter, right. but right here now. Right. In the midst of, He wants abundant life for you, for me. So answer the call of salvation. And as you answer the call of salvation, it's pretty easy. Um, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says, If you shall confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, that Christ was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. You will be saved. Not maybe be saved, not, uh, I don't know if I'm saved, but you shall. So answer that call today if you're not hearing from God. So, is God calling you to worship Him in spirit and in truth with your whole being? Mind, body, soul, spirit. Is God calling you? Have you heard the call? See, this call is not just from any anonymous person. This call is from the person. Right. See, I, I, I can remember, I received my call to salvation in 2000. I'm going to just give you a personal testimony so you don't think you're by yourself. Uh, shortly after that, the Lord called me into the ministry. But because of self, but because of doubt, because of just being hard head. Right. I wandered around aimlessly for a number of years. I, I was working in the church, doing this, doing that, you know. And I thought I was serving God. But see, I was not doing what he wanted to do. And see, just like he told Saul, partial obedience is disobedience. Amen. You don't do part of what I tell you. Yeah, it's all good. You go and teach the kids. You know, you try and sing in the choir. But for those who know, I, I'm not a good singer. <laughs> no, they say all that to say all to sing, but I, I guess I have to join the other church. <laughs> but no, but, but I, I, I was working in the church, but not doing what God would have me to do. So I was not worshiping him. I was not answering the call that he had on my life. Many of us are here like that today. We serve, but are you serving in the place that God wants you to be? Are you serving in the place that he has called you to serve in? Partial obedience, saints, is disobedience. It's either yes or no. Amen. It's either hot or cold. God don't deal with the middle. God don't deal with straddlers. So until I answered my call, there was no peace in my life. I remember the day clear as, as if it was right now when I answered my call. The burden, the peace, the, the joy that, 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 that Came, that came on me, the burden that was lifted, lifted away. In the church every day. But yet not doing what God would have me to do because I did not answer his call. See, Jesus Christ answered his call over 2,000 years ago. He answered his call to come down here to the earth. To put flesh around, put flesh around his holy being, so that he can come and dwell down here with sinners like you and I. He answered his call to go to that old rugged cross, to be spat upon, to be beaten until every drop of blood 
every drop of blood, not some blood left his body, every drop of blood left his body. He answered his call to have nails drove into his hands and his feet. He answered his call to have thorns of putting pressed into his head. Not just put on, but it was pressed into his head. Now the Bible says, who is man? We had nothing, yet we were able to beat up on the Son of God as if it was nothing. All because he answered his call so that you and I may one day, that you and I may have the opportunity, that you and I will have eternal, abundant life. So why can't we just answer this little call that he has given us? He said, my burden, my burden, my yoke is easy. Take it up on you. Why can't we answer the call, saints? Why can't we answer the call, New Pleasant Grove? Why can't we answer the call? Father God. We just want to thank you for this opportunity. We just want to thank you for reminding us that you have sent us the call to for us to worship you. You have sent us a call to separate ourselves from those that you don't deem as godly. You have sent us a call to walk with you. You have sent us a call to proclaim your word far and abroad to friends, to families, and even to foes. Father God, we thank you for that word today. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you for even softening our hearts so that the word can penetrate in us, Father God. And even now we're ready to move. Move for you, oh Father God, to show you that we are ready to answer your call, oh Father God. We will move for you, oh Father God, because we know that this will move us even closer to you, oh Father God. Father God, we thank you for continuing to draw us even closer to you, oh Father God. And for that person who don't know you as Lord and Savior, oh Father God, we just thank you for them even being here today, oh Father God. Because we know that they are even ready to answer the call to salvation, oh Father God. Because you desire for no man to perish, oh Father God. Father God, we thank you for your son answering his call over 2,000 years ago. So not only that, I will be able to stand before your people, oh Father God, but that your people will be in this place to be able to hear from you Sunday after Sunday, oh Father God. Father God, we thank you for being a merciful, loving, everlasting God, for being a father, for being our provider, for being our way maker. For being there when there is no one there. Because you said you will never leave us nor forsake us. And for that we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I would like to make a call today. In Jesus' name. And it's for that person. As we all stand. And the first call is for that person who do not know Christ as Lord and Savior. Say he even a blessed man with wisdom to write this song. Come to Jesus. He's calling to you. He's calling for you. He said, the day that you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If you are 
saved. But if you're not baptized and you'd like to be a candidate for baptism, would you come down? Well, let me one today. 